Yeah. Um, I'm Flavio Perkogan, the current PDL for uh, the OpenStack messaging program. Um, also, co-name is Zakar, or Zakar, I don't even know how to pronounce it, honestly. And, well, as it has already been said, well, we're just going to go through the kilo plans that we kind of discussed uh, back in Paris uh, at the summit. So, uh, if we go to the next slide, um, before, before we even get started with uh, the kilo plans, uh, I'd like to take a little bit, uh, a few minutes of time, and it's funny what um, Zakar actually is. And, and before I get, uh, like, before you even ask what Zakar means or where the name comes from, um, the name is actually a, the name of, of, of how uh, Mesopotamians, uh, like in the Mesopotamian mythology, uh, there were some messengers for the god of sin, and those messenger uh, provided those messages through nightmares and dreams and uh, to, uh, to the people. And obviously the relation uh, with the name is about the nightmares and not exactly about the messaging part. Um, so uh, that's where the name comes from. It is Zucker. Uh, we had to change the name. The project was, pre was previously called Marconi. And, and there were some issues related to the name, and, and we were basically forced to, to change it. And, and this is what we came, what we came up with. Um, so uh, now that I've said this, uh, let's get to, to something more technical in the next slide. Um, so 101 about Zucker. Uh, Zucker is uh, like a really pro. Like, I really say like Zucker is the messaging service for uh, OpenStack. Uh, it's not the only one. There are other solutions for different areas. Uh, the key thing about uh, Zucker is that it is a data API. It has a data API. That's what it provides. Uh, it doesn't provide any provision in API. Uh, and it provides messaging, um, messaging features and solutions for um, different uh, messaging patterns. And, and obviously, it wants to be easily scalable and, and, and easy to maintain and, and provide all the Python libraries that are needed uh, to interact with the service. And if you are familiar with other uh, vendors, uh, Zucker would be something similar to Azure Q service or even uh, AWS SQS and SNS put together. So um, when I say put together, it's because when you read messaging in, in Zucker's description, uh, which, by the way, what I put in that slide is actually a mission statement that we have in the governance report. Uh, when you read messaging there, we are actually referring to um, not just uh, the ability to send and receive messages, but also the ability to uh, have notifications, um, different kind of notifications. And that, that's actually something that we will be working on during Kilo, and I think it's the next point in, in the next slide. Um, so yeah, we, we can move to the next slide now. So notifications. Um, there are a few things that no, first one. Um, so the, there are a few things that we actually want to work on in, in Kilo, and, and we we were like we tried a lot to do, keep the list like small because uh, in previous summits uh, we we came up with uh, we came up with uh, many ideas, and many things we wanted to work on, and obviously time is is limited, and and we. We kind of went through uh, all the feedback we have gotten so far from the community and, and different discussions on the mailing list, and, and we decided to take really like very few things and work on those. And there are two main features that we want to work on. Um, so there are brand new features that we want to have in the service during Kilo. One of those is notifications. Uh, like I said, uh, Zucker aims to provide notifications as well. So. We're going to go ahead and implement these as part of the new version of the API. We will add notifications so you will be able to subscribe to the service in many different ways. And we're not talking about notifications in a way that like you would probably get them from private NQ so that you would just uh, connect to the server and get notifications, uh, messages basically pushed uh, back to the client library. But we will also like to have different kind of notifications like, sorry, like pushing um, um, messages through a mobile APNs, uh, emails, uh, even SMSs or text messages. And, but I mean, that, that's far in the future. And the things that the two publishers that we want to focus on uh, for, for the killer release are actually webhooks. 
So you would subscribe some URL to the service, and when a message, um, and you will so you will actually subscribe to a queue, so a specific uh, queue or topic, if you will. Um, and so when messages get there, uh, you will get them in, in that URL that you have subscribed. Or you can also get those messages back to the client if you have a um, connection to the server um, or persistent connection, which actually takes us to, to the next thing we want to implement, and I think it is in the next slide. Um, so uh, yeah, persistent transports. Uh, this is something that we currently not ha don't have. Um, so Docker is pretty much, I hate this word, but I'm going to use it anyway. It's actually pluggable. So you can create different plugins from for different parts of the service. And we have this pluggability uh, in the storage side and the transport side of the service. Um, for the transport side, though, uh, we don't have any plugin besides the one we support right now, which is HTTP. And, and that basically means that if you want to talk to the service, you have to use an HTTP client, and you have to send message, HTTP messages uh, requests to the service, and to the server, and it will process it for you. And something we want to have definitely is the ability to connect to the server and keep that connection alive, so that you don't have to. Uh, so you can basically. Uh, work around the burden uh, related to HTTP and, and the overhead of, of the protocol, uh, which it might be load, but it, it still exists. So we want to have the ability to connect to the server and have that persistent connection there. And something that we also want to have is uh, better support for browsers. And therefore, we have chosen um, WebSocket as the protocol we will use for the first implementation of a persistent transport. And WebSocket is, I mean, it has been around for, for quite a few years already. I'm not going to say any, I'm not even going to say like a long time, but it has been around for quite a few years. Uh, there have been uh, different, many iterations over uh, the specification of the protocol and, and, and where uh, it is being supported by most of the mainstream browsers uh, nowadays. So we, we wanted to, to have something that uh, is cross browsers and, and it can be used by, by many people from the browser. And the, I mean, in addition to that, I mean, WebSocket can also be used outside the browser. If you have a WebSocket library for your uh, preferred language, uh, you, could use, you could use that library and talk to um, Docker using a WebSocket transport. And that's something we'll actually do uh, in, in the Docker client. Uh, we will have support for WebSocket from there as well, and it will. Uh, hopefully, I mean, type of meeting, it will do something fancy like falling back to different protocols based on what's available in, in, in the server. Um, so, and, and implementing this persistent transport will also require us to have a kind of a different implementation of, of our current protocol or current API. Uh, so the API in terms of actions won't change at all, but it will change in terms of uh, form because it will be kind of uh, for the persistent transport, for the WebSocket transport, we kind of convert it into something that is serial, serializable and that can be sent through a, a WebSocket. So we will kind of uh, translate what we have in the HTTP transport into um, some kind of dictionary or something like that uh, that we will be able to send to the server through WebSockets. Um, so that, that's probably the gist of, of, of this work here. And um, I'm very keen on, on, on what we're doing here. So looking forward to have it uh, ready. And so we can now move to the next slide. Right, can we move to the next slide? Okay. Um, the other thing we want to uh, work on is uh, storage capabilities. Uh, storage capabilities is not uh, it. So uh, we have the, all this uh, pluggability, and like I said, we have this pluggability in the storage side as well, and, and we are able to, uh, I mean, you can write your own uh, storage driver and, and use it from Docker, and, but this storage driver currently has to support every single feature supported by the uh, current built-in storage drivers that we have, and we want to make this layer more flexible so that other people can implement their own storage driver that don't have to necessarily live in our code base. Uh, and those drivers can surface uh, their um, these people uh, needs depending on, on what they want to do. So in order to do that, we need to convert all the features that we have currently in our storage driver into something called capabilities that we will expose through these storage capabilities 
um, and, and we will expose those uh, in the API through flavors. And these capabilities basically are um, a way to, for the driver to say uh, the things uh, supported in it. And for example, um, a driver may opt out from supporting claims or it may opt out to support uh, from supporting uh, FIFO, uh, depending on what technology it is sitting on. And it may also, it may also opt out from supporting uh, durability and in favor of more uh, of a higher throughput, for example. Um, and this is actually the base uh, feature that we need to have in order to implement uh, the next one that we have online. Um, if you want, you, you can move to the next slide now. And yeah, so the next one that we have in line is actually uh, optional FIFO. And, and I mean, the previous one was a, a, a basically the basis to, for, for implementing this. Because um, so something that we have discussed um, at the very beginning when we started working on, on Dakar, uh, like I said, at the, time, at the time it was called Marconi, uh, when, when we started working on it, we got some feedback uh, from the community. And, and something that the community said to us is that, FIFO, not having FIFO in services like SQS was actually, a, was actually very painful. So we heard the feedback and we wanted to have full support and like 100% guarantee of FIFO in the service. Um, and, and we did that and we have, a, we currently, the current released version has a full support for FIFO, but it turns out that FIFO has uh, there are two issues basically related to FIFO. The first one, and it's not, I mean, it's not bad itself, but there are some things related. The first one is that there's some overhead related to FIFO, depending on the storage driver. You would have to do some magic to actually guarantee 100% uh, ordering. And some, some technologies may have it uh, built in, others don't. So you may have to uh, do some workarounds and hack it somewhere, somehow in the driver. And along that line, there are some uh, technologies that won't support it at all, which is the second issue that we have. And since there, since there are very valuable and good technologies out there that may be a good fit for, uh, for a Zucker storage driver, uh, we don't want them to, uh, to have to pay the price of, a, of, some, of something that we have chosen as a need for, for, for the service. So after hearing uh, the latest feedback that we got from, uh, from our community, from the OpenSight community, uh, we decided to make FIFO optional, optional and, and it will depend on the driver itself and, and, and how it is configured. And you can basically opt in or opt out from having FIFO in a per deployment uh, basis, basically. Uh, so this is on something that's definitely coming in, in Kilo as well. Um, we can now move to uh, to the next slide. Well, we're basically going almost at the end of, of my presentation. I don't think I'll I'll use the whole 15 minutes, um, or probably already used them. Um, can we move to the next slide? Okay, perfect. So keys to topics. Uh, this is something that we haven't decided yet. Uh, so time permitting. Uh, we, we would like to, um, if, if, if we have enough time, we would like to uh, rename or, or what we have right now called queues, we would like to move from having queues to uh, something called topics and stop having a first citizen resource that we need to create in the database. This is just a pure optimization from an uh, for Dakar internally so that we can save space in, in the storage. So, so there are technologies that need to have uh, the, the queue resource created, they can still create it. Uh, but if there's no need to do that, like uh, the MongoDB one that we have, or even the Redis one, you can just skip and, and don't create it at all. And, and we would like to do this, uh, like switch from, from queues to topics, which would be like a more lightweight uh, resource to have in the service, but this hasn't decided. This hasn't been decided yet, so um, it may or may not happen um, before uh, the next release. We can now move uh, to the next one. 
So uh, I think that's pretty much it. If we go back to April 2015, uh, we'll, have, uh, we'll have a release that has notifications. Uh, persistent transport uh, storage capabilities and optional FIFO. And well, the dots down there is because prioritizing things is actually harder than time traveling. So things might be moved to the next release or some other things may come into this one here. So uh, the high level, this is what we would like to do. Uh, no promises made. Uh, we will hopefully have all these and more, but we'll see. And we will move to the next slide. Uh, this is a story yet, I mean, to be continued and, and yet to be told. Uh, we'll see what happens in the next release. But if you have any other questions or you would like to join and help and, and, uh, with anything and you're interested in the project, please, we're all at openstack docker at freenode. And I'm Flavio Percocco, as already said. My email is flavio at redhat.com, and I'm flapper 87 on IRC and Twitter if you have any more questions. Thank you very much.